We're going to take a few minutes to discuss the pressure reducing valve. This is a pretty important piece to have in relation to irrigation systems because if you're using a supply source such as a city water system, it may have pressures in it that you don't want entering your irrigation system. I generally have about 80 PSI as my limit. If it's above that, then I'm going to want to put a pressure reducing uh, mechanism on here. This is a pressure reducing valve, a three quarter inch. And um, generally, you're going to want to do this on any system that has elevated pressure the number one enemy of efficiency that we're dealing with in irrigation systems is for the water to get blown off of the course, for it not to land in the area that we want it to. And excessive pressures are an enemy of that. If you've got super high pressure in the system, when the water gets to the head and it leaves the head, then it's going to be, if it's, at, if it's at a really high pressure, instead of big fat droplets that travel exactly where you want them, instead it's going to atomize or it's going to turn into a mist which is easily blown off course by wind. So we definitely want to control the pressure in the system. It's an efficiency measure. Okay, what we're doing here is making sure that we get efficiency in our system as well as the uniformity of a well-designed system. You can have a very well-designed system, but if you're in an area to where there's super high pressure in the lines and all your water is blowing off course, then you've really got a pretty awful system. So this is something that you really need to um, keep you know, in your toolbox of things to use. And you should put it right after the backflow preventer. You Usually most codes want nothing before the backflow preventer, just the source, then the backflow preventer, and then any other valves going downstream because this is what's called a, a cross-contamination hazard because this could come apart and then suck water back into the drinking water supply. So we want this afterwards. So when we adjust this, it's, it's kind of counterintuitive. Let's look at the this just a structure of the adjustment here is you have two nuts with a plastic spacer in between. What the first nut does is basically just hold this in place up against the the uh, the case here. So if we want to adjust this, the first thing that we have to do is loosen up this lock nut on the bottom, right? Get you a uh, a wrench and just loosen up that lock nut and you've got this little spacer here that if for a reason there's only so much that you can tighten this thing down and open it up and every model has a range of adjustments that you can make in the pressure okay so like i said this isn't counterintuitive so the very first thing you've got to do is undo this lock nut and get it loose so that you can make your adjustment up here so you would think that clockwise righty equals tidy not the same, right? Righty, tidy, lefty, loosey, it doesn't work on this particular thing. If you go to the right, it's actually opening it up and you get more pressure from it. If you go counterclockwise, it's closing it down and you get less pressure out of it. So for pressure reduction, it's always a smart move to, to add that. If you're in an area that has super high pressures in the line and you're installing a lot of irrigation systems on city water, then you better build that into your price. If not, you're just asking for valves to get blown apart and different things to happen, leaks. Um, in, in the area that I'm at, Greenville, South Carolina, it's not uncommon to find 100 to 120 PSI in the line, so you definitely have to take care of that. I mean, you, you can see it when a system runs. You know whether a system is designed to run at the right pressure or not. I mean, if you've just got misting and just water just blowing everywhere, that's a problem. But um, hope this helps you out.